Hello, and welcome to Rainmaker's Story World Adventures. I'm Rainmaker. I can't go live yet, but I'm going to do a little video right now. It's always about this time of the evening, around 11, 12, 1, that that's when I get creative um, with working on my writing. Um, I was listening to some Yes, um, had some music going, and I have it on pause right now so I can record this. Um, I'm not really sure. This is new. I've, I haven't really done this before. I've done a couple little videos to talk about this, but I'm going to try to dig into it a little bit this time. I'm trying to get my energy going. Um, I'm really interested in doing this. Um, so I have so far three stories that I'm currently working on with my story worlds. I have a, um, I have two stories for Emron, and I have one story for Viltron 6. Um, I almost was going to read one of those, but, um, the story that I'm currently working on, I'm actually in a writing class right now, and I'm using this story um, in my class the well he's helping us to write a flash fiction is what we're moving towards unless you already had a work that you are working on and I I don't know I sensed something I guess that this would I would need something where we were going we were working on character development I'm like, okay, well, this is the only um, story that I have that I've been working on that has more than one character so far. It has a few. And so I thought this would be a perfect story to work on using these exercises. So that's what I started doing. Um, and I have quite a bit of it developed so far. I'm still working on it. Um, I thought I might read what I have so far. It's quite a bit. Uh, I will give some content warnings. This story deals heavily with abuse, um, childhood trauma, active ongoing trauma, and the discovery of oneself and it does involve uh, a child in fact the main character is a child um, uh, I'm very interested in abuse narcissistic abuse particularly and the healing of these abuses and so this sort of became a theme that came up for me in this story. I actually started writing this story 20 or more years ago. Um, I was about, I think I was in high school when I wrote this, started writing this story. Yeah, and I didn't get very far in, but over the years, I've it's been there in the back of my head as a project that I wanted to come back to. Um, and I did try to do a little work on it off and on. I had some friends that were inspiring me and were interested in it. I shared with them um, maybe about... six or seven years later after I'd started writing it um, and then kind of got hidden away in emails that I, I was sending it to friends in emails 
Um, and there it stayed until one day, oh, last year, the last couple of years, I was curious if I still had that story in my emails. And I had to go really investigate and like do the whole um, forgot my password and oh, what was the password for that other email to recover it? And oh my God, it was it was a mess. But I was dedicated <laughs> and uh, got some help too, and did find what I had of the story in some old emails from the early well no not early but like maybe the late 90s yeah that old so um without further ado i will read what i have and then i will discuss um some feedback that i had from my instructor and changes i plan on making to it and um Maybe I'll get into some plot development, but we'll see. Um, here we go. S this is a story about Tom Lee. Sitting still under a bush at the base of a large tree, hidden by scrub and fern, Tom Lee crouched, defocusing her gaze, relaxing her breathing, reaching out her mind and consciousness to the small woodland creatures nearby. A toad a few feet away, hidden under some old leaves, a snake slowly moving toward it, a shrew quickly hiding, a few squirrels running up a tree, some small birds flitting high above, and a falcon about twelve feet off on a low branch, watching all. Softly, her mind touched each one gently, picking up small, immediate surface thoughts of food, danger, movement, instinct. As her mind reached out to the falcon, she was met with an outside awareness. Suddenly, someone else's consciousness was there. For only a moment, then it was gone. And the falcon took flight, circling once overhead, and was gone. Startled, shook out of her meditation, she blinked, looked around, and feeling the same sense of calm in her surroundings, waited, uncertain and puzzled by that experience. Were they being followed by rangers? She knew she needed to get moving if she was going to escape Jairus before he woke up. Her light touch to the minds of the animals told her there was no one in the immediate area, so she decided to move on. Making her way through the trees alone, Tom Lee recounted to herself all that had gone before. It all really began about three moons ago. Her father went into one of his rages again, this time hurting her worse than before so that she finally had enough and conquered the lesser fear of leaving. It was not long after she had left home while sitting just off the road and using her seeing ability, she was caught unaware by Jairus who mistook her for the boy she hoped to present by her clothes and cut hair and immediately put her to work for him as a lure for his cheating games, acting as his shill and teaching her some sleight of hand. Later, when he'd realized her ability to see and smell and sometimes to hear through a mental link to surrounding animals, he kept special watch over her, finding many good uses to put her to. She was practically a slave, a pet to him. He did not know she was a girl yet, though, but lately, he had become suspect in a village they had just passed through. Now they were two, there were two men following them. She had managed to sneak away from the napping Jairus after carefully stealing his knife from his sheath at his waist. It was Tomley's plan to lure those men and her hope to confess to them her innocence, then help them to catch Jairus and in return be sent to a ranger who could train her in her special abilities offer her a place among them, perhaps as a scout tracker or a messenger. Rangers traveled all over the world, bringing news, managing disputes, protecting lands, and other things of that nature. It was a high honor to be a ranger. Yeah. I think I'm going to pause there for now. I've got quite a bit more written, 
but I think that's a good stopping point for the minute because um, I do, you know, I need to get into more into this habit of whenever I'm going to work on some editing or uh, write some more or um, kind of brainstorm, I, I, and I have been, but I need to get better at just like going straight to doing it because it takes me time to get to it. But rereading what I already have written, that is the way. That is what I need to do. Um, because here already, and in fact, reading out loud is really helpful. Um, so, uh, one of, a couple of the things that I'm going to do is, um, so you see, I, uh, obviously her father is abusive and I mentioned him beating her and that she had wanted to run away. So I was rethinking that to start with. I was rethinking some of that. I've, I've been wanting to explore more about her history. And I have done a little bit of editing on this. This is not um, exactly what I had written when I first first wrote it. So it's it's gone through some changes. But not a whole lot actually uh, not a whole lot of changes um, I am a little tired uh, went to uh, the river today uh, that was really nice but it left me really tired <laughs> all day um, anyway let's see yeah so kind of rethinking the nature of her abuse and her trauma when she was a child um i think i did do this last video i did where it was a little snippet from um a writing prompt on ashes and i was able to come up with a little bit um about her mother how her mother had passed away, um, had died when she was four years old, and I made mention in that writing prompt of her mother having some unusual ability, or there's something different about her mother, and I had decided to tie, tie together her mother's ability and her ability. I'm not quite sure about that yet. That's something I'm still working out. Um, however, going back into that, trying to figure out more about her mother and her father's relationship, what kind of work did her father do? And um, what sort of relationship her, mo her mother and her father had with each other? Because that would really have a lot to do with how these things developed for her and in the formation of her personality. So, um, I had thought maybe her father was a shepherd and this, this, uh, this was some brainstorming that I've done over the last couple of days. Um, cause I thought, well, if her father was a shepherd, then it would be natural that she would be raised around the sheep and you know even as early as four years old um, she may have accompanied perhaps her mother out into the field with the sheep so um, she would have had some early experience going out with her mother then um, I had also imagined that if she had gone out um, even all this time um, with the sheep, maybe uh, you could even send out an eight-year-old child to tend the sheep. Um, there was a dog, a uh, really good protective dog, and I have to think about that as well because all of these factors would be influencing the circumstance 
uh, with her father. And one thing that came to my mind was, what would she be doing out with the sheep? Perhaps this might have been her early discovering of her ability to sense through animals. Um, while I'm talking about this right now, is coming to me that perhaps it was her mother who first showed her this ability perhaps her mother had this ability and was already discovering potential signs in Tom Lee that she also had this ability and so perhaps some early practice was the birds um, I have it explained here that uh, well further in the story but she seems to have an affinity with birds um, particularly and, and I would say that perhaps she may have experimented with re reaching out her consciousness to sheep sheep are not known for their wiliness so I would imagine that perhaps that might have been an easy kind of uh, creature to step up from from something like um, a bird um, I like to blend realism with fantasy but um, there's only so far you can go in some circumstances before you've got to really just kind of imagine something. But I, I did grow up watching a lot of nature shows with my mother, actually. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, Nova, all that stuff. National Geographic, Explore, yeah, all of that. And so um, this is appealing to me. Um, animals uh, and our relationship with animals has always been something interesting to me growing up because of that and I think that this interaction between Tomley and her mother tending sheep um, is something that I can take some direct experience with not that I ever did any shepherding with my mother but we did go to the zoo a lot together and so we would talk about animals uh, and make observations so that was something um, that I had an interaction with I actually never had a father um, he died before I was born so here is something um, kind of drawing a little bit from experiences and kind of switching things around um, I think that my writing, my nose itches, it, it, it's tickling, really, I don't know. Um, the fan is blowing, I have the fan over here, it's very hot. Um, anyway, um, talking about my, my process and my uh, inspirations for uh, factors in my story, I, I, like, I like to do, I myself, love to hear about things like that from authors that I love um, and and that's very interesting to me so um, I, I think I like doing this I think that so far it's been productive for me that um, I've already kind of brainstormed a little bit um, anyway I'm gonna continue um, yeah, I wasn't sure that I wanted to have her father beating. I think that that would be a different kind of personality and relationship than she would have um, in the time that she was with Jairus. Um, and, you know, just because she was being beat ne isn't necessarily cause enough for her to run away. Um, uh, I have to consider the nature of the trauma bond uh, that she would have had with her father. Um, 
I would imagine that there may have been a deeper trauma bond between her mother and her father. So I would think that, because I, I, from the very beginning, her mother has always felt like a very kind person, very gentle person. Um, I think that it's trying to imagine a shepherd being unkind and violent. It doesn't strike me as a very shepherdly kind of quality to have. Um, so I'm kind of really thinking about this. I don't know exactly why I went with shepherd. Um, I guess I wanted to have a reason for her to have experience going into town but also being more out in the countryside as well. So having some um, level of isolation and some reason why she would be able to be out on her own um, in an area with animals where she could have experience with some animals like even just birds, sheep, frogs, uh, in frogs in the meadow, I guess, flies, dragonflies, different things like that. Um, some element of freedom, um, but not too much. Um, so naturally, that's that's what led me to think of a shepherd. So. Um, thinking <laughs> yeah um yeah so well that's something that i've i've been rethinking also i haven't gotten very far with that yet that's really kind of where i'm at it's like yep gonna change something with that gotta think about the relationship between the parents um and how that would affect things um and so the other thing that i was going to change mint in my water chocolate mint from my garden um and yeah jaris yeah so what i wanted to do here also is i wanted to have uh, another trauma bond formed better um between tomley and jaris like out of the frying pan and into the fire kind of thing um that was not intended to be a Tolkien reference, but I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I have later in some dialogue, I have um, I, not later in the dialogue here, but more in the, there was an exercise uh, that we did at the beginning. In fact, I think it was the first class um, of this writing class I'm in. Um, we had to write um, first person perspective. Um, the a monologue of the protagonist, the antagonist, and the a third party slash mediator um, a monologue talking about themselves. So basically, the, the this is a developing uh, character exercise, which was really helpful. Um, anyway, in the dialogue with Jerris, there's very definitely uh, narcissistic traits. Uh, of gaslighting, um, turning things around, uh, blame, blame shifting, um, and the way that he's talking about Tom Lee, and the way that he's handling Tom Lee in this narrative, this story. Um, 
I think that I want to show Tom Lee expressing more care for him. Um, and so I am going to make a few edits to change, uh, to reflect that a little better. Um, let's see. There's, what else was I? Oh yeah, I have a table here that I wrote um, in my notes. By the way, I am using OneNote, Microsoft OneNote, to organize all of my writing. I do, however, have an account with World Anvil, which is really cool. However, um, I'm, it's, it's still a little complicated, and they just made some updates just as I got used to it, of course. So um, I've got to go back and relearn the whole thing. So that's why we're not, I'm not in World Anvil right now. And I haven't really made it public. It is, there is publicness, but I haven't really posted the link anywhere because I'm still working it out. Um, but anyway, this table here, here it is, uh, is actually a copy of a meme that I found on Facebook earlier today. Actually, I really liked it. Uh, so I just kind of copied it into notes here so I'd have it for reference in front of me. Um, here is, oh, I just adjusting my volume a little bit. I don't know if that's going to affect anything in the video. Uh, but yeah, so if you suddenly got blared uh, with sound and you, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I will endeavor to do uh, better sound checks in the future. Anyway, um, it's a, we have two lists. We have trauma bonding and authentic bonding. So trauma bonding is fix, save, and validate my existence. Authentic bonding, learn, see, and hold space for all of me. Trauma bonding, chaotic and unpredictable roller coaster of emotions. Authentic bonding, safe, consistent, and insightful. Trauma bonding, my relationship mirrors my childhood experience. My relationship is based on freedom, accountability, and mental peace. I betray myself and all of my needs to receive love. I do the work to meet my own needs first. You complete me. You enhance who I am. Big difference! Big difference, people! Yes. Um, I have had... A f quite a few relationships, two long relationships, and a few short relationships um, that I trauma bonded in. So I have personal experience in these kinds of relationships. I have another channel, Rainmaker's Journey, that I talk a little bit about some of that in. Check it out. Um, and if that's your thing. Um, authentic bonding, I am happy to say I'm experiencing more of that. Um, however, I'm looking at the trauma bonding list over here, uh, and that's helpful. I want to look at the chaotic and unpredictable roller coaster emotions. <gasps> oh, sorry if I made you yawn. Um, and some of the characteristics also, that's just this table, but some of the characteristics of the trauma bonding is um, the people pleasing putting uh, others' needs over oneself, 
um, taking blame, over apologizing. making excuses for the abuser. Um, and this, this goes along with the love bombing. So love bombing is a term used when discussing narcissism and personality disorders where this is, this is where the, the toxic person uh, is going to do a lot of really nice things for the person they're abusing who is their supply which is another term used in these kinds of things um, and that is the supply of attention the supply of whatever needs were not being met basically in their own abusive abused childhood that they are now seeking as adult um so a toxic person basically um a toxic person is someone who there's a part of them that never matured that never grew up um there was an unmet need in their childhood and that part did not develop and mature in the normal way. They did not meet, meet those certain emotional milestones that um, healthy adults do. Uh, and so Tommy's father and Jairus both uh, are, are some people like that. Now, Tomley's mother, now here's, here's another thing, and I, I myself would fall more into this category with the experience uh, and the trauma that I have had where um, having unmet needs of a different sort um, and having different kinds of attention given, uh, different parts are not allowed to mature, are not do not mature in the normal way, and so we also are lacking in something that we seek as an adult, and we are magnets to these toxic people who are needing supply. We feel like we need to give. They want that. <laughs> and that's kind of the basic of how that works. So this is, um, I have to think about her mother and what kind of personality that she would have been to give that supply and have formed that trauma bond. So that's something else that I'm exploring. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if I want to continue or if this is a good breaking point. Um, about half an hour is good. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it here and leave something for next time. Um, I'm not sure what the next video exactly will be. I'm not sure. Maybe I will discuss changes I made, reread some of something edited. I might read um, the uh, monologues of the characters, although I think I'm going to be editing some of that too to reflect this. So um, we'll, uh, we'll come back and see where we are next time. Until next time, folks, this has been another episode of Rainmaker's Story World's Adventures. Bye.